right now. As this video is coming out, I'm actually live on Twitch. Go ahead and hit that top link in my description to take you over to my channel. I am live a couple times a week. We have a really cool community there and it's, it's a really fun time. So come hang out. What is going on guys? Welcome back to another Pokemon Brilliant Diamond and Shining Pearl Wi-Fi battle. Today I have another really good match here. I did find this one using the link code 2022-2021. Shout out to Joey for setting that up. It's actually a code that people are using to try to find some lower tiered matches. Basically if you're not using the same six overused Pokemon, it's a good place to, to find some matches. Anyway, my opponent actually does have uh, a relatively overused team, but they, they have some interesting threats in there, and it's quite the scary team. So I'm excited to see kind of how uh, I am able to do against this with my with my underused team here. I've been having fun with this team. It's got some uh, it's got some gimmicky Pokemon, but when it works, it can it can work pretty well. So let's go ahead and jump right into the match here. I'm thinking they're probably going to want to lead off with the Nido King. It's kind of the only Stealth Rock setter. So I'm actually going to toss out the Frostlass to get some Taunt shenanigans and you know hit hard with Ice Beam and all that stuff. But uh, to my surprise, they actually end up going with the Milotic. So that's uh, that's not a great matchup for Frostlass here, I imagine. They'll probably just go for like a Scald, right, get that Flame Orb activated, and just start to do the annoying shit that Milotic does. So, I'm actually going to end up switching out here, save the Frostlass for later. The good news is they do not have the Stealth Rock set up, um, so I can actually you know maintain that uh, Focus Ash that I do have on the Frostlass. So, I bring in Yellow Balls. I am working with... Uh, I'm working with Volt Absorb rather than Water Absorb, so I do take damage from the Scald, but I'm max HP, uh, max special attack, so I don't take too much from that. And this actually puts me in a pretty good position here, because uh, I can kind of force a switch here, get the Volt Switch, and then build a, build a little bit of momentum here. So they are going to switch out the Mellow Tick. That thing has absolutely no business staying in uh, against my Yellow Balls. They end up going into the Scizor here, and I'm like, okay, yes, we've set this up perfectly. Uh, I get some big damage there with the Volt Switch, and now I can go into whatever... I would like here. Now, my team does not necessarily look set up to be able to handle Scizor and his big fucking meaty claws, but I do actually have Fire Blast on Tauros for that exact reason. Uh, shout out to Lime the Tauros, an OG Pokemon I've been using for many years, and the moveset, you know, kind of, it, it switches around a little bit, but lately, uh, running Fire Blast and Ice Beam on this thing is, is working out really well in overuse matches, because you can catch Scizor off guard with Fire Blast, uh, Ice Beam works great obviously for things like Gliscor. And Tauros overall, with that sheer force, is just an absolute unit. So I go in the Tauros here, and they're probably thinking, I don't, I don't know what the hell this thing's going to do to me. There's pretty much no eminent threat here. But as you'll find out, I do connect on a Fire Blast, and that is going to be able to take out the Scizor. You absolutely love to see a Scizor getting roasted and toasted by a Tauros. And uh, down goes that thing. A huge threat out of the way. Um, I was definitely worried about that Scizor. So taking care of that kind of uh, opens up my team a little bit here. So... Now they get a free switch into the Infernape. I do not want to play it too risky and stay in expecting the U-turn. The pivot is kind of obvious here, um, but I am actually going to end up just switching into Lantern in case they just go straight for that close combat. I know that Tauros uh, is going to be a really fast attacker for me for the later on in the match. So I go into Yellow Balls here, who's kind of just a, a big old sponge ready to just take some, take some damage. Uh, do actually end up going for the U-turn there, which is kind of a bummer because now they get a switch into whatever they would like. But in the long run, it's not horrible. I could potentially get a Volt Switch of my own. But as you'll see here, they end up bringing in the Swellow. And we all know that Swellow is an absolute threat. There's not really a whole lot that can switch into this thing, especially with my, uh, especially with my team. I'm thinking, you know, Sand Jobs can probably take one, but obviously, you know, can't hard switch into this thing. So I kind of have to let old Yellow Ballington take, a, take an attack here so that I can get a, a free switch in and kind of assess this threat as it needs to be. Also... It must be windy as hell in this battlefield, because look at how the boy's just gliding over there. Just just gliding up a storm. So, takes care of me with the facade, and, you know, that's a bummer. Lantern was looking great for things like the Milotic, but, you know, you gotta you gotta do what you gotta do sometimes. Um, now I have a couple options. I can either go into uh, the Sand Slash, or I can bring in the Ice Thought. Jinx's long-lost cousin does have that Focus Ash still intact. I could bring this thing in, basically get knocked down to one, and ensure I'm able to kill the Swellow. Uh, with an Ice Beam. I figure out that's probably going to be my best play here. Frostlass doesn't look necessarily super useful for this matchup here. Plus, once I'm knocked down to one, I will be speedy enough to outspeed some things uh, and potentially get some damage later on. So I go for the Ice Beam here. Luckily, they do stay in and just go right for that Brave Bird, probably just seeing the KO. But I got that Sash, so that is amazing. 
This thing gets cursed body just as a nice little kick in the bird nuts right before it faints. Just like, hey, you can't do that anymore, and now you're dead. So an Ice Beam takes care of it. And that's another big threat out of the way. So a couple offensive threats um, gone early, and that's kind of uh, kind of what I'm reading, because those those fast threats can, can definitely tear my team apart. So now they get another free switch, they go back into the Infernape, and your boy needs some hazards up, because at this point, shit, this, this freaking monkey keeps switching in for free, and we gotta tax that guy. So I'm thinking I should probably stay in here. As I was saying, Frostlass isn't super useful. I could either hit this thing with a neutral Shadow Ball, put it in range to kill later, or I set up a layer of spikes. Now, looking at my team, I'm trying to basically conserve my Metacham, because the remaining Pokemon that they have are pretty weak to Metacham, especially being Choice Carp, I can outspeed, so I decide to go ahead and set up uh, the layer of spikes there, as he actually ends up killing me with a U-turn, uh, which is totally fine. Ice Thought goes down, but since he kills me with the U-turn, this allows me to see uh, what he actually decides to switch into, and then I can decide to match up accordingly. Getting up that layer of spikes is not huge, but it is going to at least kind of punish switch-ins a little bit there. So, he decides to bring in the Nido King to the empty battlefield. The guy's probably thinking, where the hell is everybody? I thought this was supposed to be some type of party. But, uh, I'm going to figure out who my best switch-in is here. I could potentially go into Metacham and scare it out with a Zen Headbutt, but I do want to conserve that thing for later. Make sure no funny business happens, and I end up going into the Sand Slash here. Uh, now, this is a little bit of a risky play, because I'm pretty sure Ice Beam actually does knock me out. Um, but I potentially bringing in Sand Slash against that thing kind of bluffs the fact that I could potentially just be like max defense, special defense um, in HP. So I go for the Earthquake here as they actually end up switching into Milotic. So they, yep, this asshole is still around, kind of forgot about you, but I really need to start whittling this thing down to the point where I can knock it out with Metacham because Metacham still is going to be kind of my, uh, my end play. Paired with Tauros, I should be able to... Uh, kind of make some stuff happen. So I'm going to switch out the Sand Slash, save this thing for later, um, and I'm going to go directly into the Mask Rain. The Pinhead comes out and he says, your time is up, boy. We're about to start dancing on you. Intimidate because, you know, I'm sharp. Um, obviously, you know, you don't care about physical attack. So actually ends up going for the Recover. Again, just doing annoying shit that Milotic does and gets like back to full. Um, so God, I really need to, I really need to get some damage off on this thing to be able to uh, kind of win this match, whether it's just a little bit of chip or if I'm able to potentially set up on this thing. So I go for the Quiver Dance. Now, the worst case scenario is if this thing is carrying Ice Beam. I decided to test that because sometimes uh, you don't see the Ice Beam. Um, I'm hoping it's also not Dragon Tail either. But goes for the Ice Beam here after my plus one special, special defense. I am able to take uh, at least one more of those. But the fact that this thing is going to be Life Orb, Pinhead does not really want to take another one. So my only plan here is essentially just to go for the Air Slash. Try to get the flinch. Pinhead keeps trying to get flinches out here, and I'll tell you what, it's just not working out for him. I get, I get off the air slash here, uh, does not flinch, and they're able to land one more ice beam. As you'll see, they actually end up getting a minimum roll. Knocks me down to seven. Pinhead, fuck yeah, buddy. And that actually puts me to the point where now I can take care of my low tick uh, just with the Masquerade. Unfortunately, you know, the sweep is going to come to an end here because of the fact that I am life orb. I probably need to get rid of that life orb, but... Boy, does this guy appreciate that little bit of extra damage. So, uh, I finished this thing off with a Bug Buzz just because I do not want to miss an you know, Air Slash. There's no reason to click that anyway. I went for it initially just to get, uh, just to get, try to get that flinch chance. But if I did get that flinch chance, I would actually be looking pretty damn nice at this Masquerade. As it kind of seems like the general theme of that guy. But, uh, we both go down. Now we're, we're looking at an empty battlefield here once again. So, I have to decide who I want to go into. Um... Metacham has a good matchup on pretty much everything, but I decide to go into Sand Jobs just to see what they're going to go for. Um, if this thing goes down, it's fine. It's not really... Uh, it's, it doesn't concern me too much for the late game anyway. So they go, end up going to Nido King, steps on some more Legos, and guy's like, what the fuck, man? So I'm going to go for the Earthquake here. You'll see they actually just end up having the Ice Beam. Sheer Force Nido King is too damn powerful, and there's no way that Sand Slash is going to be able to live an Ice Beam straight to the neck. So that takes care of Sand Slash, but it's really not too big of a deal because I still have my win condition in the back pocket, and my plan is this. Uh, I go into Metacham here as I'm able to outspeed with the Choice Scarf and kill it with the Zen Headbutt. Now, then likely comes in the Gardevoir, who I cannot kill with a Zen Headbutt, but I know that Tauros can take at least one attack from that thing as long as it's not like Choice Specs. And then I just go back into Metacham after getting the chip damage and finish things up. So, see how it plays out here. I bring out Nipple Knee. Looking extra thick today. And I go for the Zen Headbutt. Still connect. The Magic Forehead doing it to him. And that takes care of Nidoking. So now they're down to two Pokemon. They have the 
uh, the Gardevoir and the Infernape left. So, in comes Gardevoir, and obviously being locked into Zen Headbutt, unless I get some Miracle Flinches, it's not going to look great for me. So, step two is now in full effect. Everything is kind of going the way it's supposed to in my head here. I'm able to switch into Tauros. I uh, can serve the Metacham for later. Tora should be able to take one attack and then, uh, you know, scare it, at least do a whole bunch of damage uh, with a nice little stab rock climb. So they go for the Dazzling Gleam there. Uh, Tauros does live that with 23. Looking great here, buddy. Now all I gotta do is land a rock climb and that's a dub for your boy. So I go for the rock climb here and uh, as you'll see, it actually turns out to be a Choice Scarf Gardevoir. That's the only way that thing outspeeds me in that situation and that is truly... Truly really a bummer. And, it, you know, he was keeping the late game scarf in his back pocket. I was keeping mine with the Metacham. It turned out that uh, that he did conserve his win condition better than I did. And Gardevoir has absolutely slapped me in the face. He's like, damn, Ma, at least buy me dinner before you fuck me like that. But uh, that's sometimes the way it goes. <laughs> anyway, I can bring a nipple me here. I do still outspeed uh, as I have a higher base speed with the choice scarf. So I can go for the Zen headbutt. And if I can land a flinch. I could potentially still win this, and I think two should be able to kill. Uh, so I outspeed here, I go for the Zen Headbutt. It's not looking like it does enough damage, unfortunately, and I still don't get the flinch, because when have I ever gotten a flinch when I need him, you know? You hate to <laughs> you hate to rely on flinches, but anyway, that is gonna be the end of the match there. That was a really good one. Uh, shout out to Billy. Shout out to Billy for that one. That was a, a really fun match, and honestly, I had a lot of fun. So, thank you guys very much for watching, as always. Make sure to hit that like button on the video, and subscribe if you're new here, because I will be coming out with some more uh, Wi-Fi battles alongside uh, some, some Legends Arceus content when that comes out. So, peace out, guys.